One of the primary benefits of using a product like Expensify is that it's cloud-based. In other words, I can access it anytime, anywhere. To the same end, a lot of us are moving towards accounting software that's also cloud-based. We've looked at Expensify in terms of its integration with the desktop edition of QuickBooks so far in this course. Now we're going to take a look at what it looks like in terms of the integration with QuickBooks Online. Let's come along and see what this looks like. So the first step in connecting Expensify to your QuickBooks Online file is, of course, connecting Expensify to your QuickBooks Online file. Funny how that works. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to Admin. I'm going to click into my company policy. It's likely you'll just have the one just like I do. And once you're in there, you want to come over here to Connections. And then we're going to head down here. We're going to connect to QuickBooks Online. And once you check off this radio button, this option, this button should appear here that says Create a New QuickBooks Online Connection. So when I click on that, Expensify is going to think about it for a second. And then it's going to access based on what I'm logged into, which is why in the write-up I suggest you make sure you're logged into the right QuickBooks Online company file before you get here. That way you can be assured, or it's that much more likely, that you'll get the one you're looking for in the list. And it will access your uh, all of your QuickBooks Online companies that you have access to, so choose carefully. I'm going to choose this one here that says schoolofbookkeeping.com live. And now uh, Expensify is going to confirm with me that I want to authorize it to access that data. So I'm going to choose Authorize. And now Inuit is securely transmitting my data to Expensify. That's exciting. And here we go. In less than about 30 seconds, the process is complete. Of course, as you might have just noticed on the screen, it went through importing all the different lists. I'll be honest, I haven't got much in this file. It's a brand new company file that I created just for purposes of this demonstration. So uh, it might take yours a couple minutes longer if you have a lot of stuff in your QuickBooks Online file. One of the major benefits of using Expensify with QuickBooks Online over using it with the Desktop Edition is that in the Desktop Edition, you can use tags to associate an expense with either a customer job or a class, but you can't do both. In QuickBooks Online, you can actually tag expenses to both the customer job and a class if you want to. In the desktop version, you had to choose whether your tags would be used to import um, customers, jobs, classes, or, or you know, or, or, or you could choose one or the other. But notice here, you have the choice to, uh, under import customers, jobs, or classes, you can choose both. So why not? What could it hurt to have both in there, right? So choose both. That option is not available. In, in the desktop, you have to choose one or the other for the tags. Uh, report fields. Import remaining QuickBooks lists at the report level. Uh, and you can choose to import all anybody who is listed as an employee to share this policy with them. In theory, that's going to be what you want because that the employees are the ones who are going to be submitting expenses to get reimbursed and for you to report on and so on and so forth. Um, then uh, the export, we're going to export them as a check or a vendor bill or a journal entry. So I'm going to choose vendor bill, right? Because that's I'd rather have it create a bill that I can then pay as opposed to creating a check right away. Maybe I don't want to write a check right away. At least this way as a bill, I can write the check whenever I want to. I can do it immediately. Uh, and then accounts payable is, of course, going to be the default uh, account that's used with that bill. Um, but notice you have other choices. You can do it as an inventory asset or have it go into undeposited funds, which would just be weird. I wouldn't do that. Um, export as non-reimbursable expenses. Export non-reimbursable expenses as credit card, debit card, vendor bill. Well, in theory, a non-reimbursable could go on a company card, but notice when I click this, it says no valid account found because, like I said, it's a new company file. I don't have a credit card set up. So debit card I could choose and then say it's Wells Fargo. Right, because non-reimbursable theoretically means I've set up my bank feed, maybe, and so it's not being reimbursed. I just want to be able to report those expenses through Expensify and categorize and code them and so on and so forth. It may not matter if your intention is to download your bank feed directly from the, your bank and, and code it there, um, or you can choose to do it as a vendor bill if you think that any non-reimbursable expenses would go in as a vendor bill. But again, that seems contradictory almost because if they're not reimbursable, why would I need to enter a bill to pay them? Um, Right? So I'm going to stick with debit card for now. 
and you can always go back and change these settings. So now I'm saving. It says, oops, QuickBooks Company File does not have classes enabled. So my tag configuration has been reset to customers only. So let's go. And notice here there's a configure button. So after I go into QuickBooks, let's do this. Let's go and, and enable classes. Right, so let's go to Company Settings. And we'll go to Company, which is where we start off. And over here, Categories, Track Classes. Yeah, let's turn that on, and let's turn on Locations, too, while we're here. And then Warn Me When a Transaction Isn't Assigned a Class. I always like to do that. And then Location Label is Location. You can change this. You can call it Business Property Division. I'm going to call it Division, because that's just fun. And then we'll click Save. Done. It's a good idea to wait for the page to refresh in QuickBooks. That way you know that the, the settings have been completed, that they've taken. Okay, let's choose both. <clears throat> so we've got classes set up in QuickBooks and turned on. We've got customers set up in QuickBooks and turned on. Customers is always turned on, but I've added at least one customer, and I added two classes just to make sure that uh, that may be what Expensify needs. It may need to actually have something to sync up with before it will allow you to do it. So let's see what happens. And it looks like we have success. If you're starting a brand new QuickBooks company file and you want to be able to use tags to uh, access both, you know, both classes and uh, customers and jobs, you have to have the classes preference turned on, of course. And you have to have elements on each of the lists. In other words, you have to have added at least one customer and you have to have added at least one class in order to be able to configure the tags to be able to import uh, both classes and or customers and jobs. Save and close. Once the sync is complete, go over to the Expenses tab. To be absolutely safe, click the Refresh button on your browser. Just can't hurt. won't cost you anything extra. And then choose New Expense. And you should find that your categories are all here, based on your chart of accounts. And your tags are here, so that you can choose from among your classes. And then, of course, we have customers here as well. So since we chose that we wanted to use, be able to track both, the tag becomes the, um, the class, and the customer is the customer, of course. That's pretty straightforward. That's uh, the first thing I wanted to show you about the QuickBooks Online integration with Expensify. Everything else is going to be pretty straightforward. In fact, a lot easier to manage here because you're going sort of cloud to cloud as opposed to cloud to desktop. So once you've got set up and running, I think you'll find it's pretty easy and straightforward as far as how to do things. Have a look if, if you've got a copy of Expensify going and get caught up with me. Make sure that you can get this far as far as the QuickBooks Online integration and we'll show you around some of the other features that uh, are nice about using Expensify with QuickBooks Online. Now that you've seen how it works in terms of the integration with Expensify and QuickBooks Online. There's one last thing I'd like to show you for now, which is aimed at making sure that you understand how when you make changes to your file in QuickBooks Online to make sure that those changes show up and are reflected on the Expensify side.